Okay, I am back. I'm ready to record more games. Now with the new agenda of the White Book. Uh, my opinion on the White Book agenda is it's definitely not like a particularly good or a top tier agenda, but it's playable. It's another agenda that goes up there with like the Faith Militant and Brotherhood, where it gives you a nice benefit, but it's reliance on you having a fairly sizable board and actually winning challenges to get the agenda's benefit. So it'll still get shut down and lose to top tier decks with broken cards that just lock you out on turn one. But you can do some work otherwise. Uh, it can do some good stuff. So at first glance, there's an issue of there just not being that many Kingsguard characters. And there's not that many, but the ones that are available are decent. They're not terrible. Uh, they're very usable. And then you have the White Cloak, which you can use to make knights who are good and go well with the agenda, but don't have the Kingsguard trait into Kingsguards. And Baratheon might even have the most amount of those. With We have this guy, the Sir Davos, who you can use twice with the White Cloak in the agenda. Uh, the six-cost version of Sir Davos also works that way. And if that guy could trigger off of bypassing any character, as opposed to only non-loyals, then I might be using him instead of this. But yeah, he works. Uh, Justin Massey, who can get renowned. And where's the other one? The Bastard of Night Song is another really good one. Obviously, you can make him into a King's Guard and stand him up when he wins challenges. Red Ronnet, that's something you could use if you felt like, you know, you're going to run into some Shadows cards. I haven't quite put him in here, but you could probably put one of them in here. Stuff like that. That's reasonable. And you can see I don't have Bodyguards because the way that the deck worked out, the only Lord or Lady characters in the deck is the two Kings of Robert and Stannis. Well, I guess Shireen's a lady. I forgot about her, to be honest. But at first I had bodyguards, because I'm just used to putting them in every deck. And then I look back through the deck, and I realize there's actually not that many characters they go on. And of the two characters who are important to save with bodyguards, they also can just be saved by the White Cloak. So that's kind of nice that you can just use this instead of a bodyguard. It's reusable. It has another use besides only saving. And, uh... Yeah, like it's non-terminal, so you know, if you use it to save your dude from one Valar, then just play another knight and put the White Cloak back on him, and now he's safe again. So that's pretty nice. So to use the de to use the agenda and to make this deck, you obviously want King or Queen cards and King's Guard cards. Now I tried to put the Queen version of Selyse, the 4-cost version, the 6-cost version just doesn't work in this deck, but like her ability and the lore attachments, I just can't bring myself to do it. It just doesn't work. Maybe she could still be in here as a single copy. She wouldn't really hurt anything. Just a four cost, three strength card with the queen trait. And, you know, one day maybe you'll draw her along with Lightbringer and get the discount. And that'll actually be really sick. But I just couldn't bring myself quite to do it to play bad cards other than that. But I do have the six king cards, Robert and Stannis, the... Kings that go in all your Baratheon decks and give you your king stuff. So they're in here, and then I tossed in as many decent king guard, king's guards as I thought there were. I think I have exactly seven, which is the Shadow Knight of Flowers, uh, Robert, Mandon, Sir Preston Greenfield, this new guy, this king's guard, Jamie Lannister. Uh, his ability where he can actually give king's guards intrigue icons for free is kind of cool. You know, you can put an Intrigue on Sir Barristan or something like that. And Sir Balin Swan, who also is reasonable. Because you have plenty of non-Lannister Knights, and he's a King's Guard with renown, so he goes along with the agenda. The ability to stand a wide board of a bunch of dudes that have renown or just have, like, power gain abilities means that you can really rush and close out a game really fast with this deck. But again, that's reliance on you having a large board, which is definitely not guaranteed. And then I've got, like, Hedge Knights, because I've got Knights in the deck, and I need some cheap characters, so these go in pretty well. I think originally I had Vanguard Lancers, but draw is constantly an issue, so I just went back to the Storm's End Maester. I like him a little bit better. Uh, Emery is in here somewhere. There he is, Shireen, because we have Red Keep, and she's broken with Red Keep. I mean, not broken, but pretty good for a three-cost card. Uh, all that type of stuff. What else? Sir Courtney. I mean, he's always good. Red Priest, one of the best Baratheon cards. Moon Boy, another cheap dude that can draw. 
Got our Crescens, our Faithfuls, our Begging Brothers. Basically a Brathian deck outside of those cards. So not, not anything too unfamiliar. I do have the one Lightbringer, which, you know, it's pretty good. You get it on Robert or Stannis. Got our Red Keep, our Spears, then the Economy. And the plots are pretty familiar. We've got the Economy, Draw, and Reset, and King in the North. Because, especially when you have three times Maester Crescent to take care of Milks, I've, as always, you see very little reason to deviate from this plot line for Baratheon, or for decks like this in general. Like, board-based decks, this just consistently ends up being the best plot line, something that looks like this. And even with one of the next decks I'm going to play, which had enough attachments and events to try to use Exchange, I ended up taking Exchange of Information out and still putting in Counting Coppers, because it's so important to have, like, big relevant characters that you can play. And if you play exchange, they're just going to give you like a little one cost dude. And that'll be the only character you draw off of it. You really want counting coppers so that you can try to draw at least one big relevant card to keep playing out every turn. So that is the idea there. The other two factions that I made white book decks for is Greyjoy and Tyrell. I think I mentioned that. I did try to make them for Stark or Lannister, but unfortunately, uh, there's just actually not enough knights that really uh, go well with the agenda in Stark or Lannister that make it worthwhile. I was looking through their lineup of knights that aren't Kingsguards and like that would benefit from the White Cloak and make it worth doing, and it's like, man, there's just not that many. So that's sort of why those didn't quite make the cut. They can do it. They do have king and queen cards, but their king and queen cards also aren't the best, which is another thing that kind of holds them back. Like the king version of Joffrey is not that great with this agenda. I mean, I guess he's playable, but he does kneel the faction card, but you could probably get away with playing him if you really wanted to. Uh, but then your other option is like Tommen. Which I guess they could be worse, but you're playing a card that you definitely would not play otherwise. As compared to like Baratheon or Greyjoy or Tyrell, where all your king and queen cards are cards that are totally fine and worth playing on their own. With Greyjoy, you can use Balon and Ulanis, who have the king and queen traits respectively. Alright, let's see how this goes. Ugh, friggin' Targaryen. Well, at least it's Prince. Is it gonna be Prince Drogon? That would be funny. People really like Targaryen online, I feel like. Uh, still Daenerys. I don't know if that's just like my bias talking, but I, I really feel that way. That they just love some Targaryen. So I think I can go... Yeah, I guess I'll just start with the Red Keep. I don't know. This is really worth it. Do I want to set up the Milk? I mean, probably not against Prince. Or do I? It's bad, like, except against Daenerys. I'll do it, I think. Try to get something else. Well, I didn't know he was going to set Daenerys up. So maybe that was wrong. But I'll live with it. It's dangerous to put him first, because he could have Drogon. My, but if he has Drogon, it doesn't really matter what order you go in. Well, I don't have any saves. I guess I have Barristan as a save, but it's going to be like two turns to get Barristan and a Lord out. Oh, it's this Drogon. Well, that makes me... That reassures me. It's the one that doesn't immediately win the game. I appreciate that. Well, he's got all his junk right off the bat. That's not good. Definitely don't like that. I guess I will play... I guess I had, I didn't really think that one out, because I really want to do Red Priest, right? Get rid of Dracarys, kind of have to do that. Oh, there's no Dracarys, wow. 
So what is more annoying out of this hand? Probably this card. I guess we'll have Moon Boy just for someone to die. Yeah, I guess the Dragonstone port versus Great Hall didn't really matter there, because if this was a Dragonstone port, I'd have one more gold. But that wouldn't really let me play anything relevant. I was just stuck with an awkward amount of money. Alright. So, like... Intrigue, power... Oh, she don't have stealth. That's handy. I might as well defend this, because if I don't, then she'll just stand. Although, again, I'm not sure that it makes any difference at all. I guess I block an unopposed. That's the difference that it makes. Maybe I should have killed my Red Priest over Moon Boy there. Because I think I could have won that power by defending with Moon Boy. Could have been a bit of a misplay. Mother of Dragons? That's no good. So we're going to have to waste another turn being able to do basically nothing here. It's going to take us a while to set up our side of the board. And then hopefully the game will not be over yet. We will see. Damn, these are all terrible. Oh man, really don't want to give him any of these characters. I guess Aegon, I don't know. Alright, we got the white cloaks, that's good. Although I need a knight to put it on. Yeah, this is the issue when things get expensive, is I don't have enough money to put out a knight along with them. I think I have to just put out Maester Crescent and again just use him as uh, military fodder. Unlucky that I didn't draw like a Hedge Knight or, you know, Dragonstone Faithful or something like that.
Now he just marshaled Aegon normally. That worked out. Alright, so the problem here is we know that he has... Whatever that card is. Uh, gifts for the Widow. So you can put another Tokar on Daenerys. And then she gets two Tokars. Which is plus three each. And she gets way too big. Which is bad because it makes me unable to defend power against her. So I guess I should just declare a power challenge. Even though it has very little chance of going through. Did not use the stand, chose to find a duplicate instead. Interesting. Hey, Flea Bottom, that's a good one. I guess I can stand on the off chance that he only plays one Tokar. I guess. I mean, military is pretty much totally irrelevant. I guess I'll defend this, or try. See what happens. Oh yeah, Mother of Dragons. I'm not very good at this game. Not very good at this game. Does not do a power challenge. That makes sense because I lost a power challenge on offense. Damn, that was a really card that I definitely wanted to have. Casa, really? Well, I guess since he was at reserve, it makes sense. Is it going to be Return to the Fields? This looks like a Return to the Fields to me. Oh, trading with the Pentoshi. Sure. Alright, no Plaza of Pride. Fingers crossed, no plaza of pride. Uh, but he has the damn mother of dragons, so still quite a large problem. Well, at least I can actually play cards this turn. That's always a good thing. Shadows card. Spooky.
Yeah, we're pretty sure we're dead, because we can't do anything about this Daenerys. Nothing you can do about that. I might should have just held that white cloak. But I'm not sure how that works with Valar Morghulis. I have been wondering, can you do a white cloak to kneel him and then use his ability to stand him? That would be really dope if you could do that. Uh, I guess I'll defend this. No, why would you do that? Oh, because he gets the Rhaegal trigger, of course. Yeah, this game's like 100% over. This is called a game where they have everything on turn one, and you don't have an insane get everything on turn one draw like they have, so you lose. Although, also, it's probably a bad matchup. Because my deck is built more to not die to resets compared to countering something like this. Although I'm not sure what Baratheon can even do against this card. Uh, the Black Cells or Dragonstone Castle is what you can do against this game plan. It's not something that you see super often, so it's not something that you tend to tech against. But when they have the perfect draw sequence and you don't have any cards that counter it, then yeah, you just die. So that's what happens, man. Maybe we'll do better in the next game. It's sad, because I think you can do reasonably well with this deck, but... As always, sometimes you just get screwed. It just happens. I don't know, what time is it? Uh, 20 minutes. I'll call it quits.